Lawrence will uh, give a talk entitled Establishing the Link Between SOC Electro Performance and Microstructure by Means of Demography and Image Based Monitoring. And this is a summary of uh, activities at the end of
and then uh, compare this with uh, more realistic systems and we have where we apply these more or less new methods. So there, in literature you will find many models uh, where synthetic microstructures are produced and usually uh, they have a, a well-defined first order structures and then analytically the second order parameters are determined and uh, what these uh, models play with is uh, the electronic conduct like nickel or wire stuff and then uh, synthetic microstructures with different volume fractions are produced or with different sizes and important here of course is uh, that the TPPs that we measure are only active when all these three networks are uh, connected. Yeah. Yeah. This is very nicely treated, for example, in recent publication of uh, So, these models, what do they tell us uh, qualitatively at least? Uh, when we change the volume fraction of nickel, uh, uh, we get distributions of TPPs like this. So when the size of the two, of the nickel and of the ceramic phase is the same, we have a symmetrical curve with a maximum and a volume fraction of 0.5. Uh, once we go to volume fractions close to the so-called percolation threshold, part of these get isolated, and that's shown here, the amount of material which is depercolated, not connected anymore. And then, in this area, the TPPs are protected. And of course, when we go to smaller particles, we get higher TPPs. And uh, once we get to uh, different sizes for the two phases, this curve becomes asymmetric. So the maximum TPP is rich. Uh, for example, when we have larger nickel, we have to add a higher volume fraction of nickel to get the maximum and vice versa if uh, is more perfect. So this is a very simplified model. Uh, um, we get in these synthesized microstructures, I added that just before uh, Brandon was speaking also about synthetic microstructures. The advantage of these microstructures is we have full control over granular textures. We know where our particles are. Uh, we have discrete objects. Usually, the size distribution is quite clean. Now, when we go to realistic microstructures, um, we get some differences, I would say. First of all, after sintering, uh, we, we do not have these uh, discrete objects anymore. We lose the information where the primary particles are. We have a network of microstructure. And here, actually, it's quite difficult to say what is a particle. The question then arises, how do we measure particle sizes? So this is one example which uh, shows that we need to actually improved methods for microstructure quantification. Uh, I just I really don't want to go too much into methodological aspects. I just want to emphasize a few uh, parts. Before we can quantify, of course, image acquisition is a, is probably is a key feature. And uh, field tomography, of course, gives us new possibilities. Um, I started field tomography back in 2003. At uh, that time, uh, FIT was not at all dedicated for 3D. Uh, there was a lot, were a lot of problems with drift, for example. Uh, things like uh, contrast and charging was very, very much worse than today. In the meanwhile, FIT tomography has established really it's uh, occupying this niche, I would say.